Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Finally, I got the video boost feature on my Pixel 8 Pro, which is something I'm really excited about. In this video, I will show you how the feature works in detail and also do a side-by-side -side comparison with the 15 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra to see if it makes a big difference. So without further ado, let's jump in. So how to activate the feature? Once you get it on your phone, you will see a splash screen similar to this one when you switch to the video mode in the camera app, or you can also access it by going to the video settings and you will see video boost over here with a question mark, tapping on it will show you the same thing, which will give you some basic information about how to use the feature. But what I recommend the most is to tap on learn more here at the bottom, which will take you to a very long article. And I recommend reading it word by word because using this feature is much more complicated than what I thought. It has a lot of things to keep in mind before using it. I will summarize everything for you anyways, but I also recommend reading it yourself. Now let's talk about the rules and restrictions to use video boost. When you activate the feature, you will notice here, some of the settings are now grayed out. First, there is no other frame rates available. You can only use 30 frames per second, no 24, no 60. You can turn on the HDR just fine, but there are no stabilization modes available. You can only use the standard in addition to the removal of macro videos as well, but you still can use the speech enhancement just fine. The maximum duration you can record with video boost is 10 minutes and it only works with the main camera. So you cannot use it with the telephoto, the ultra wide or the front camera, which is a bummer for me because the front camera is where the Pixel 8 Pro really struggles in the video department. So I really hope that Google will at least include the front camera in the future. But anyways, let's take a look at what we have. The zoom levels are limited to 1x and 2x and you will see the video boost flag at the top left corner and as per the article I showed you earlier, if your phone is low in storage while recording, you will get a notification first and the phone will stop recording. Also keep in mind if you have the feature activated and then you quit the camera app and open it again, it will be deactivated automatically. Now let's take a look at how the feature works in detail. When you finish recording and open the video file in Google Photos, you will see two thumbnails at the bottom. One for a preview video and the second one is for the boosted and you will see the video boost icon on top of it. When you swipe up on the preview video, you will see that it's recorded in 1080p resolution even though I recorded this video in 4K and it has the word cover in its name. This is just a preview video for you to see what you recorded and also share it with others up until the video boost finishes processing. Moving to the second video and that's when things become very interesting. Google says that the camera app will record a temporary video file. This temporary video file is unplayable on the phone up until the whole video boost process finishes. What will happen is Google Photos will upload this temporary video file to the cloud then the video boost feature will finish the processing and then give you a notification and it will automatically download the processed video to your phone's storage if you are connected to Wi-Fi and it will automatically delete this temporary video file. The temporary video file is recorded in full resolution. So when I swipe up, you will see here it's recorded in 4K and it has a massive size. If you take a look here, it's a 3.2 gigabytes for one minute and 44 seconds, which means 1.7 gigabytes per minute and when you compare this to a, a normal 4k 30 video it only takes 312 megabytes per minute so there is a huge difference between the two moving to the second video and that's when things become very interesting google says the camera app will record a temporary video file then google photos will upload it to the cloud for processing and once done it will automatically download the processed video to your phone's storage once you get connected to a wi-fi and then it will automatically delete the temporary video file. This temporary video file is unplayable on the phone and Google use it only for the processing purposes. But when you swipe up, you will see some information. For example, its name has the word main in a sort of cover like the preview video. It has the full 4K resolution, not 1080p, and it has a massive size of 3.2 gigabytes. This is a one minute and 44 seconds video, which means it takes 1.7 gigabytes per minute. But when you record a 4K 30 video on the same phone without video boost, 
it takes only 312 megabytes per minute which is a huge difference in size but this doesn't mean that the processed video file will be as massive as this one because the camera app captures tons of information needed for the video processing and i'm expecting the final result to be much smaller than this google also says that when google photos upload this temporary video file to the cloud it doesn't take anything from your storage but it will be saved somewhere until the process finishes and the only thing that will take from your storage is the final processed video in case you have the backup option activated but i was curious to know why this video file is so massive and if i can play it on the pc before processing to see how it looks and i managed to copy all these files from my phone to the pc and let me show you what i found even though the video was unplayable on the phone but i was able to play it on the pc just fine and here's how it looks next to the 1080p preview file to me it looks like a raw video without any processing or stabilization so it's very shaky it lacks colors and there is no hdr whatsoever the second interesting thing i found is the bitrate of this video is massive it ranges between 240,000 kilobit per second up to 350,000. when you compare this to a normal 4k video the maximum number i have seen from the pixel 8 pro is 45k and that's definitely why this video is so huge now let me show you some hidden tips and the tricks on how to use the feature first if you have a normal and boosted video you have the ability to delete either this or that so it says here both videos or the current video only so if you don't want that 1080 preview video you can simply delete it and keep that boosted one on your phone secondly video boost will follow your google photos backup settings so for example if you have it set to wi-fi only video boost will only use wi-fi without any cellular data unless you set it otherwise third if you moved the temporary video file to a different location for example by plugging your phone to a pc and then moved it to another phone Folder, don't expect the feature to automatically delete your temporary video file but you need to do this yourself talking about the size of the processed video file this one finished processing and when i swipe up this is a one minute and six seconds video and it has a size of 170 megabytes 4k resolution and when you compare this to the preview file in 1080p it's 168 megabytes so it's almost the same size as a 1080p video which is kind of interesting and lastly here is how the video boost notification looks like it will tell you video boost complete and the date and time on when exactly it finished in my experience it took less than two hours since it finished the uploading and now let's do a side by side comparison with the 15 pro max and the s23 ultra to see if this new feature really worth it let's start with the morning comparison but let me first compare a normal video to understand where we at in this scenario the s23 ultra and the pixel look very similar in terms of white balance while the iphone is the warmest the s23 ultra shows less details when compared to the other two and the pixel has the darkest shadows overall i think all three look great but it depends on your personal taste which one you like the most now let's compare another footage in the same area but with video boost enabled on the 8 pro at the first glance the 8 pro boosted video is the brightest with almost no contrast unlike the normal version and that's why the sky looks flat without any gradient which i can see in the other two videos the iphone has the perfect balance between the shadows and the highlights in my opinion and the s23 ultra video is a bit dark and soft so again it's a matter of taste which one you like the most but for me i think the iphone looks the best here's another sample to show you how brighter are the videos coming out of video boost especially with the trees it looks good but as i mentioned before adding more contrast is needed to look more realistic so please let me know in the comments what do you think you will also notice that video boost improved the stabilization to be as good as the 15 pro max while the s23 ultra is the worst as i can clearly see the impact of my footsteps in the video now let me show you one more sample to help you decide which one looks the best
Overall, I think Video Boost improves the quality, but it needs some tuning in certain scenarios. Now let's try the night videos. In this sample, the iPhone's white balance was too warm and the pixel was too cool, while the S23 Ultra nailed it and it looks the most natural to me. The 15 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra are better than the pixel in handling the lights, and lastly, the pixel produced the most stable video, followed by the S23 Ultra and the iPhone comes third which is totally unexpected as the morning videos were the most stable. Here's another sample and I can see the same differences in white balance, but the Pixel decided to change the purple lights into blue for some reason, and that's why the other two phones are better in this area, which is something I hope Google will address in the future. Lastly, I tried Video Boost in a very dark area at night to see the full potential. The S23 Ultra produced the noisiest video with the least amount of detail and a noticeable magenta hue. The 15 Pro Max looks the best to me, the video is so clean, natural, and detailed. While the Pixel did well in removing the noise to beat the S23 Ultra, but it couldn't reach the iPhone's level. In the HDR, the Pixel is the worst as it blown out all the bright lights as usual, while the S23 Ultra and the iPhone were noticeably better. So that was my review for the Video Boost feature of the Pixel 8 Pro. Yes, it delivers some improvements, especially when you compare it to the normal videos taken with the same phone, but I expected a lot more considering the amount of time it takes, and I'm really disappointed that it only works with the main camera. So please let me know in the comments what do you think, but for now, thanks so much for watching, and see you in the next video.